Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be looking at a video called The Crazy Defenses of Butterflies and Moths. This is a video by Zafranc. It's been a while since I've watched a video by Zafranc. Um, I enjoyed it the last time though so I might these little animal videos that I get to do sometimes. I like them quite a lot. Before I get going, I wanted to give a big shout out to AKArbit3R91 and to Jonathan H. Thank you so much for being channel members. If you do decide to sign up and be a channel member, you can get some early content. You can get some shout outs. Um, some of the content is just going to be flat out extra because I, I can't put it on YouTube for whatever reason. So you know, lots of, lots of little perks if you become a channel member. We really do appreciate it. We also have a store link below. We got shot glasses like this one here um, and other, other stuff. Not, there's not other stuff in the store. Don't, don't go to the other store for anything other than shot glasses. But you can help the channel by buying one. And then at one point, we'll take a shot together. Um, it's still January, so I'm still not drinking. But soon I'll be taking a shot with people. Cough, cough, solo, Alexander. Um, anyway, this is The Crazy Defenses of Butterflies and Moths. Let's go. This episode sponsored by Brilliant. Learn to think. <laughs> the adult wait, wait, it's not for children. Learn to think. Or, nor for adults who don't act like children. I often act like a child, so I think it's fine. The adult form of insects in the order Lepidoptera, the butterflies and the moths, are some of the most beautiful insects in the world. But come on, they're ridiculous. Just look at them. <laughs> to get to this point, Fair. they've had to go through a baby phase as a sort of above-ground, slow-moving worm thing. And then they just hang out for a couple weeks in a sleeping bag dingleberry, so they've had plenty of time to plan, and this is what they turn into. I mean, it's not like being in nature as a walk in the park. Well, I guess it is, but my point is, it's dangerous out there for a butterfly. Jerry, that's a fish. Oh, dang, <laughs> that bird's a dick. My point is, everything's trying to eat you, and that's the body you're working with? Come on, it's like being in the middle of a battlefield and someone's dancing around in a kimono. Just look at the way they fly, it's like a drunk person trying to find the bathroom in an Ikea. But don't fall for it, it's a ruse. Lepidopterans are the perfect killing machines. Jerry, that's not true. Well, I don't care if you saw it on Reddit, we talked about this. Do your job, Jerry. Some of them anyway, drink blood. Butterflies and moths and I think that's kind of cool that some of them drink blood. I don't know. I've always liked butterflies and moths. And I used to love caterpillars, too. Like, we used to, like, collect them, essentially. And then occasionally, we I tried so hard to, like, take care of take care of them until they would um become, you know, the moth or the butterfly or whatever. And it never worked. They died in the cocoon every single effing time. Which is not my fault, because half the time I even, like, let them just be on the tree or something. I can't believe my mom let me put the caterpillars on the tree sometimes, because we also lived in an area where sometimes they would get so numerous that the trees would be, like, covered in the... It was, it was kind of horrible, actually. Like, the caterpillar webs. <laughs> it would get kind of sketchy. But, like, so, so, so often she let me put really... And then they always died. It was so sad. I have two pairs of wings, one in front and one in back. These wings, in comparison to their bodies, are much larger and broader than those of other flying animals. Now, being lightweight with huge flappers means that they can take advantage of some of the fluid properties of air. First off, they don't flap that often, around 10 times a second. Compare that oh. to the 200 times a second of a bee, for example. Oh. With each stroke, the edges of their wings create swirls of air that resemble smoke rings. On that's a really, really cool graphic, you guys. I really liked that. A downstroke, these vortex rings move down and away from the body, which results in vertical lift. But on the upstroke, the rings move away more horizontally, which causes the butterfly to move forward. So as the butterfly flies, it leaves behind a trail of these vortex rings as That's it alternates cool. between lift and propulsion. But there's an additional trick going on here. These wings are razor sharp and uh, people get killed to death. Really, Jerry? Just stop it. These I wings are quite floppy floppy. And if you're paying attention, you can see that on the upstroke, the wings bend in a way that causes the front edges to come together first. This seal creates a pocket of air that's squeezed out like a fart from under a duvet as the rest of the wings close on each other. And that air bubble is shot right out through the center of a vortex ring. Just like that fart was initially shot up, no. And this creates even more forward propulsion. 
Now when they fly backwards, they change the angle of their body so the upstroke creates lift and the downstroke moves them horizontal. So when you see butterflies flip-flapping all over the place like the flying equivalent of a marsh pit, they're doing that on purpose. They can fly in a freaking straight line if they want to. Now, they do that crazy flying shtick to f*** with the birds that want to eat them. It's a defensive oh, strategy. Cool. Float like a butterfly, it stings when I pee sort of thing. Here, you know how some butterflies are toxic to birds, right? Not my personal favorite form of defense, by the way. Yeah, that's right. That tastes like crap. Eat me, bird. Oh, shit, you are. Here, for example, is a blue jay puking right after eating a monarch. Showed him. <laughs> anyway, the poisonous ones often have brightly colored wings, so at least the birds can learn to stay away after a couple bouts of food poisoning. These toxic ones also tend to fly slower and straighter. It's like another signal to the birds so not to pretty. f*** with them. Now, non-toxic, delicious butterflies will often <laughs> mimic the colors and patterns of toxic butterflies to get some of that protection. And some of these mimicking butterflies are polymorphic, which means they can come in a number of different forms. Sometimes each one of those forms mimics a different toxic butterfly. Well, but it cool. goes beyond that. Females of the species Papiliopolitus come in a few different forms. Papilio this one, the top one, it's mating, mimics a toxic butterfly while this form mimics a non-toxic male. Here's the kicker. When it mimics the toxic butterfly, it doesn't just mimic its colors, it mimics how it flies, flying oh, slower dip. and straighter. And that's the thing. These beautiful insects are bullshit artists. And it that's all comes awesome. back to those wings. I mean, I know they look like they're made from tissue paper that got wet over top a child's marker drawing, but that's more bullshit. They're incredibly sophisticated. Don't get me started. Well, I guess I already have. The whole thing <laughs> kicks off in the... You're not allowed to touch them, right? Is that a myth? Are we going to discover that that's a myth? That, like, touching them is, like, super, super bad for the butterfly? Because we used to... We did. We were always taught not to touch the wings, but, like, if you could get it to land on your hand, that was always, like, the best day. The sleeping bag thing. First, the basic shape of the wing is formed by these two membranes that sandwich together around oh, veins. Oh, so cool. The veins both add some structure, but also carry the butterfly's version of blood. Butter blood. Once that's on its way, a series of overlapping scales begin to form on the outside surface. And each one of those scales is anchored into its own little socket. As these scales form, you can see colors begin to emerge, transforming them into the scary clowns of the insect world. Jerry, you're afraid of butterflies. <laughs> They're not dangerous. No, clowns are. I mean, butterflies aren't. You can see that it's not Fair. just one pattern that forms, but rather a series of patterns that overlay one another. Yeah. Some of these colors, like these browns and blacks, are made from pigments like melanin, which we have in our skin. Pigments work by absorbing certain wavelengths of light and reflecting others. Your bright blue t-shirt absorbs all the wavelengths except the bluish ones, which are reflected back to your eyes. The scales of the butterfly can have some pigments. Those are so cool. It looks like, like uh, embroidery cross-stitching or something. That's awesome. It's in them, but so can the membranes underneath them. Here is Ciproeta stellenis. On the right, all of its scales have been removed from the wing. The remaining green is formed from a liquid pigment in the membrane that can stain a piece of paper if you touch it. But this is a bit unusual. Hmm. Many of the brightest and most impressive colors... See, that's, that, this is one of my favorite types of butterfly, that blue. Like this blue one. I love it. I've always loved this, this particular type. I can never, ever remember what it's called, but I'm like, the blue one with the black tips. Beautiful. Colors on butterfly wings don't come from pigments or anything that would stain a piece of paper that touched them. Instead, the colors are made from the architecture of the scales themselves. If you zoom in, you can see that scales are made of these ridges, and the ridges can come in a number of different three-dimensional shapes. In some, there's a place for little pockets of pigment to hang out, but in others, there's no pigment at all. Instead, there are these structures called lamellae, which are just the right size and shape to take advantage of some of the strange properties of light. As light hits one of these, a certain amount is reflected back off the surface, and some light just passes right through. But depending on how thick these are, some wavelengths are reflected off the back surface. Now these oh. two sources of reflected light interact with each other, sometimes canceling each other out, but sometimes amplifying each other to create an intense color. Whatever light oh, wow. passed on through often hits another one of these lamellae and then another, reflecting back even more of a certain wavelength. That's how this blue morpho, for example, gets such a vivid blue. If you change That's the angle so that the light cool. hits these structures, the wavelengths interfere with each other differently. That's like uh, iridescence or something, right? Does like is that kind of also how like 
raven or crow feathers work because like sometimes they all like they look really really shiny and that is that has been a goal of mine to be able to get my hair to do that <laughs> um at some point to like figure out how to like layer colors and in in my hair enough to get it so it like it kind of they can shift from like a greenish to a purple like a like a crows does or ravens does is that is that how this works too and that's why some butterflies shimmer and appear iridescent as they move. This is different from pigments, see. which reflect the same wavelength, regardless of which way you look at them. Oh, look, that one's laying babies. But often, these oh. butterfly colors are the combination of both pigments and the structural colors made by the lamellae. That blue that's morpho really cool. from before has a layer of black pigment underneath, which absorbs the light that passed through and wasn't reflected. But there's another species of morpho that has the reflective scales, but not the black pigment and the wings appear this bluish opal white. If you want to learn more about the physics of how butterfly wings get their color, or the computer science behind things like artificial intelligence, or even how a toilet works, well, brilliant.org is a free and easy way to learn about math, science, and computer science. All right. I've been looking at the course on how All everything right, so that Brilliant go. has to offer, free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org. So this is how you can get the Brilliant, uh, app or whatever but if you want to check it out the full length the video is going to be linked below obviously you can go and check out his channel show him some love and this is his sponsor link today slash zay frank or click on the link in the description the first 200 of you will get 20 percent off brilliance annual premium subscription and you'll be supporting a brand that helps make this show possible try brilliant today where were we oh right now if you've got the ability to do all that with it looks like color, a rabbit you know you're gonna get creative Look, it, it looks These like These tiny little patches of cells sometimes form on the wing, and they release proteins that cause the surrounding scales to create different sorts of pigments. This is how butterfly eye spots are formed. And I get it. You turn a corner and see one of these, you might sh** your pants. This one, not so much. More of a sand vibe. And then, come on, I mean, this one's just adorable. I don't want to run away. I want to get closer to it. And then, of course, there's too much of a good thing. But why stop at just eyes? I mean, you could tattoo snake heads on your shoulders. Who's going to want to f*** with you then? Ooh. Now, if you're not feeling flamboyant, you can take a more subtle approach and blend into the background. Or be see-through. Sort of. <laughs> I mean, come on, that looks just like a dead leaf. Standing upright on a living leaf. <laughs> <laughs> but if a predator sees through your little disguise, you're not f***ed yet. Some butterflies and mothers that are drab or camouflaged have bright colors on the insides of their wings. So if they get found out, they can buy some time with a little razzle-dazzle. And that shit works. And the science hippies know because they f*** with the chickens. Chicken thinks it's in for a nice meal and then nope. Reacts like a sane person would if they picked out a black licorice jelly bean. If you're one of those weirdos that likes them, I don't want to hear it. It's an abomination. Now, if all of this doesn't work and you're about to get a bite taken out of you, you still have some control over what part gets bit. Those long things on the back wings of the swallowtail, for example, seem to be effective at drawing an attack. And in fact, the veins on those back segments are weaker to allow for a piece to rip off a bit more easily. And that's oh. not a bad result. Butterflies and mothers can often fly just fine missing a back wing or two. The back wings, it turns out, help more in dodging and weaving okay. than they do with the actual flying. And that's why some of them look a bit ridden hard and put away wet. I'm bringing that phrase back. Now, moths that are active at night sometimes have these really long Lay tails. In the dark, they can't really use colors and patterns to the same defensive effect because the bats that hunt them use sound instead of vision to hunt. Shoom. Having a really long tail can confuse the hell out of a bat or at least get it to do minimal damage. But when you're getting hunted by something that uses sound, there's other tricks you can use to confuse the hunter. Some mothers have scales that can absorb sound, making them invisible or inaudible, I don't know. But another way wow. to go is make more sound. Most mothers have exceptional hearing and can sense when a bat is closing in. And some use special structures that can create clicking sounds to jam the bat's sonar. Sometimes that involves scales on the moth's abdomen, or in this case, the genital valve. You can try this at home. <laughs> now, there's a species of moth that lost its ability to hear, so it can't hear the bats coming. You know what it does? It uses part of its wing beat to make a sound, so it can make bat-confusing noise all the time. And so the bats try to catch things that don't exist. And that is how the Lepidopterans do. We haven't done that for a while, have we, Jerry? 
Oh, and also, it's not floats like a butterfly, it stings when I pee, Jerry. It's a bee. No, the bee isn't peeing, Jerry. It's stinging. Do you understand? No, the bee isn't the reason it stings while... No, what do you mean, how did it get up there? No one's peeing, Jerry. Well, of course it would hurt, Jerry. That's beside the point. That's what the bee said. <laughs> I don't get it. I liked the Jerry jokes. I don't remember if those exist, if they were in that the last time, all the Jerry jokes. Uh, but that was quite good. I like it. I've always liked it when someone argues with someone who's not really there. Um, I had a friend who we did this like new show thing together and he used to, if there was like a technical issue, he'd start yelling at Orlando. And like, Orlando, come on, come, come, come Orlando. It, Orlando did not exist. I don't even know where he pulled that name from, but um, he became just as much a valued part of our team as everybody else. Um, that was, that was fun. <laughs> Uh, but so I, anyway, I like the Jerry thing. I don't remember if the, that character existed in the last Z Frank video I watched, but if it, if it did and I forgot about it, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jerry. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I really did. And I certainly learned some stuff about butterflies. Lepidopteran. It's such a fun word to say too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what to watch next in the comments below and I will see you all in the next video. 